guys. So today I wanted to talk about something that is either a place where we've all been at one point or maybe you currently still are and that is buying your first wig and trying to figure out where to start, where to go, where to look. Um, if you're like me, when you were wig shopping for the first time, you were very overwhelmed. There are so many options, there's so many different kinds of wigs, there's different caps, there's lengths, there's fibers, just so many things and it can be really overwhelming and intimidating and I want to give a few pointers that would have really helped me had I known kind of what to consider back when I was still in that place. So when it comes to wigs, there are, you know, different sizes, there's different types of caps, there's different types of fibers, there's different lengths, um, curly ones, straight ones, so lots of different things um, that if you don't really know what all those different things are, it can make it hard um, to kind of know where to start. So um, I think one of the, the most important things is to figure out what size you wear. You can figure out your size by going to a wig retailer near you or um, measuring your head and finding a sizing chart online. You know, John Renault has a really good one on their website for their pieces, and I think most brands do as well. Um, so size is really important, knowing that there are different sizes, and we all have different size heads, and it's really important to pick a wig that is your size, because it'll be more comfortable, um, it'll help with the longevity of your piece, um, just so many reasons, you know, just like, Buying a bra, you know, you don't want to buy someone else's size. It's just, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so then there's also cap construction. There's lots of different types of caps. There's basic caps. There's uh, wefted caps. There are hand-tied caps. There's lace front. There's monofilament tops. Um, lots of things, you know, to consider. So if you, you know, want a lot of breathability, a wefted cap is a really good idea. So wefted cap, I have my Mila by John Renault here. This is what it looks like. You can see literally it's sewn in wefts. Um, kind of like the way I think of it is if you like put extensions in your hair, those are called wefts. So they're kind of like rows, the hair sewn in in rows. Um, and that will give you a lot of breathability, still, you know, natural looking movement, of course, but not necessarily as natural movement as something like what I'm wearing today, which is the Blake by John Renault. And Blake's cap is 100% fully hand tied. Uh, she has a lace front and a monofilament top. So, you know, what are these things good for? So the fully hand tied cap for one is just, it's comfortable, it's stretchy. And since the hair is, sewn in piece by piece it's kind of you know the way your hair grows out of your head so it has like the most natural movement and look to it um the monofilament top mimics the look of your scalp and it allows you to part um your hair in more than one spot um which is a huge one for a lot of people you know you can switch it up you can do a middle part left part side part whatever you want to do um and what's so nice about the lace front is that it you know it makes it look like the hair is coming out of your head so when you know what those different things mean it kind of helps you know which way to go with choosing what type of cap you want so i'll take her off and show you um the way i showed you the wefted cap on the mila uh, what she looks like and what i mean when i say mono top and lace front and all of that so this is the lace front here let's just flip her inside out as well this is the lace front. This is her mono top, and as you can see, it goes across you know, the, the full top of your head for parting purposes. And then here is the hand-tied cap, and you can see that it's stretchy, looks comfortable, and all the hairs are sewed in piece by piece. So some things to consider when trying to choose what type of cap to buy, I think would be, to consider what's your goal with your wig. Um, have you have you recently lost your hair, or maybe not even recently, but but you want to mimic um, the look and the feel of what you just lost. 
Um, which if that's the case, you know, then obviously going for something with the most movement and the most realistic look to it is going to be something that you want to go for. If you are just, you know, you're experiencing temporary hair loss for one reason or another, you might just want something that gets you by for a short time. And if that's the case, um, then a wefted cap or, you know, just a basic cap is okay too. It really just depends, um, what your reason is for buying your wig. One of the other things um, that I would have wished I knew more what the differences were was the difference between a synthetic piece and a, a human hair piece. Obviously, human hair is going to be the closest thing to what you probably recently lost or lost at some point. Um, and if you want something close to what you are used to having, then I think getting a human hair piece is going to be an easier transition into wigs for you um, than going straight for a synthetic piece. If you want something that you can really, you know, apply heat to and curl, um, you know, low to moderate heat, of course, and style, then a human hair piece is a good way to go. Just know human hair pieces do require a little bit more care than a synthetic piece. So synthetic pieces are nice because they're pretty much styled for you. You have to, you know, you wash them, you, you set them up and you let them dry and their style comes right back and they're ready to go again. Of course, there's a little bit more care that goes into a curly hair piece um, or a longer piece. Not a whole lot though. It's all very simple to consider as well, but you know, that's kind of the difference. Um, synthetic pieces, so lifestyle, that's kind of where that comes in too. Not just, you know, is your goal to have something as most as realistic as possible, but also what's your lifestyle? Do you need to like get up and go quickly in the morning? If so, a synthetic piece is a great option for you because it's styled, you pop it on, you go. I know for me personally, I work early in the mornings and synthetic pieces are great for that. Of course, if you want to have your human hair and you want to be able to style it, you can always style it the night before and put it on your wig head and pop it on. Um, but you still had to invest a little bit more time into styling that piece. So it's really the amount of, it's, it's the look that you want and the feel that you want, but it's also the amount of time you have and what your lifestyle is um, to consider too, which are things that I didn't really know. When I was buying a wig, the only thing I considered was I wanted what was as realistic as possible um, to not feel like I was wearing a wig. And so I wanted something that was human hair, such as The Blake by John Renault. So that is cap construction and, you know, fiber. Other things to consider are length. Um, again, kind of like I've already said, if it's longer, whether it's synthetic or human hair, longer, longer hair in general just requires more care, upkeep, and styling than short hair. Longer synthetic pieces require a little bit more brushing throughout the day um, and, you know, some detangler possibly to keep those longer fibers from rubbing on your clothes and tangling. Um, longer human hair is gonna require a little bit more styling, a little bit more brushing. So again, that's kind of, one, it's personal preference. Do you prefer long or short hair? But two, what is your lifestyle? How much time do you have? Um, and how much time do you want to have to take styling your hair? And then another thing that I did wanna bring up was color. So I think it might be an easier transition into the world of wigs to go with a color that you, you already know that you like on yourself. Um, before dabbling into different colors, although that is one of the funnest parts of wearing wigs, is trying out all the fun different colors. But since we're strictly just talking like first wig here kind of tips, I would say to go with a color that you are used to um, before trying all the different colors, which kind of segues into my final tip, which is really, this goes for um, picking out the cap, the fiber, the length, and the color all, is I would really suggest going into, uh, finding a wig retailer and going in and trying on different wigs, feel the different wigs, feel the different fibers, look at the different colors, try them on, see how they look on you, see how they make you feel, feel the different caps. This will help you pick out your size. This can help you decide, you know, if you truly want that look of the mono top and the lace front, or if you're more okay with, with a basic cap. Um, those are all things that are, you know, truly you can't know until you try the wig on or until you purchase it and it gets shipped to you. But I would really recommend for your first wig, going um, to a wig shop or finding a retailer and trying them on um, 
once you try them on and you get familiar and comfortable with the different types of caps and whatnot, then you know what you like, you know what you're comfortable with, and you know what you enjoy and what you wanna look for. So you'll know what to search for online if you do decide to dive into purchasing wigs online um, and trying out different colors. And this is a great way, if you go in person, you can try on a color that you've never tried before. My go-to, because it's what I was always used to, was, um, was brunette. And then I went to a wig retailer and I tried on a blonde wig and now I absolutely love blonde wigs and it's I never thought I could go blonde. So I would just suggest for your first wig, when it comes to color amongst many other things, but go with a color, either one that you're comfortable with or go to a retailer and try on different colors. So I hope all of that was helpful to you. Those are all tips that I kind of wish I would have known. I think they would have made the wig purchasing process a lot easier for me. Um, I hope I didn't leave anything out. I tried to remember everything that I wanted to say, but yeah, happy wig shopping everybody. I hope this was helpful again and thanks for watching.